What's going on, everybody? My name is Nick. My name is Dave. And this is The Deep Dive. And we are in our final week of our Real Faith series. And this week we did Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. And it's sad that the series is over. I've enjoyed it. Is it is sad. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun to yeah. kind of watch these movies. And uh, I think you stated at the very first one, just finding God in even the little things, like movies and stuff like that. So, And it kind of helps you even like look for God in other small places right. and around the world, wherever you're doing. When... Good tools to have. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's uh, let's get into this, shall we? Okay. All right. Well, Dave, um, we had a little bit of a an exciting after lunch thing, and I have a quick question for you. Okay. How many Methodists does it take to jump a car? <laughs> well, today it took three. Well, almost four, if you count Steve. He came in late. Oh, that's right. That's so, right. Yeah. Four. Yeah, we uh, we came back from lunch, and there was a lady in our parking lot, and was like, "Do you have any jumpers?" And I just happened to put jumper cables in my car. On Saturday, I haven't had jumper cables in my car for 10 years and just happened to and uh, happened to need them two days later. It was pretty so it was cool. Fun. It was fun. I like I like doing acts of service yeah. with you guys, and it, it, was, uh, it was a good treat to do. It was uh, a good time. Yeah. And uh, anything for the weekend? Did you have a good weekend? I did. Uh, my, my daughter came uh, and uh, watched a few movies and played some Mexican train and ate nice. some food and tried to stay cool with all the heat. And yeah, it's it been good. hot. Yeah, we had a pool party. Uh, we were part of our group for Simple Suppers. Got all together at uh, the Simmons house, and uh, I had fun playing with a bunch of kids in the pool and hanging out with a bunch of adults. And nice, uh, we had a good time. I had a good time. Super. Well, let's um, let's get into this. Do you want to kind of give us a little bit of a recap of the sermon? I know this is a little bit of a different one, but this was a little bit of a different take. Yeah. Uh, it's still based on a, on a movie, but uh, Mary Poppins is so beloved. And you know, I, in both services, I asked how many people had seen the movie. Everybody has yeah. seen Mary Poppins. And so, uh, so the real key to it for me was to understand the context of Mary Poppins. And so we talked a lot about that and why context is important. Mm. So more than just using like different scenes from the movie, we really went in particularly into the author whose name was P.L. Travers and what her motivations in, in writing uh, were, where maybe the character Mary Poppins came from, what some of the other characters might have been based on, because there was insight to it. And, um, you know, just to try to quickly say why that was important to this movie and to the interpretation of how Mary Poppins uh, came to be is that uh, that P.L. Travers uh, wrote the books uh, back. I think the first one was published in 1934. And then Walt Disney at some point started trying to negotiate to have them made into what we've all seen as a beloved film. Right. And so P.L. Travers had her own background and her own motivation. She was kind of a difficult woman. And, uh, and so she did not want Disney to do it. And for years would not negotiate with him. In fact, she finally did after 20 years. And so when they started shooting the movie or, or, or actually kind of writing the movie and the songs, uh, she was a consultant on it and was very difficult because yeah. of, of kind of the directions they were going with some of the characters. And, you know, it, it was kind of hard, for, I think, for Disney to see, well, why, why don't you like this? You know, and, and you know, I, I don't understand. So where that applies to us, I think, is when we study anything, but particularly when we study the Bible, is understanding how much context and motivation of the early writers were mm -hmm. to the people that the Bible was first written to. Understanding those sort of who, what, when, and where things uh, really, really makes a difference and really in some ways can very much change what the interpretation ends up being. We might read it on the surface one way, but when we really begin to have the deep dive as we try to do each week, right. you really understand it in a very, very different light. And, uh, you know, and that was, I, so I sort of built around that in sort of telling PL Travers story a little bit in the sermon and sort of this, uh, the making of, of, of Mary Poppins and, uh, how some of those things, you know, had some conflicts and then how they were resolved. And so that yeah. was kind of what that, I, that was, I, Probably not very helpful to people listening, <laughs> but that was really what I was trying to accomplish in in the sermon 
was the importance of context to our study of the Bible in particular. Yeah, I think you got to have context to get the real meaning from the Bible. You know, I, I, it's it's real easy to to read everything 100% at face value and and some of it's worth reading at face value, just catching it and say, God loves me. Okay, I can understand that. But mm-hmm. when you start thinking and understanding the context of like, well, why is God? Because you were a child of his. or You know what I mean? Like, as you really start diving down in, and I love how you tend to pull from like the Greek and the Hebrews as well as like, as so we can understand even more of the like direct text. Mm-hmm. Um, it just helps kind of bring a, bring the Bible to life a little more. Right. And And that's when it kind of gets juicy i guess you know it's like oh this is really something for me i find that when i go past the face value is when it really kind of resonates deeper in my soul you know what i mean yeah and we could we could break it down you know in different places i just thought of a couple of of quick examples in the bible you know take that passage of about uh that you know uh how hard it is for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven mm-hmm. it would be easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle right and so you know that has been you know what was jesus talking about that that's it's an impossibility so it must be impossible for a camel you know for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. But there was actually in the uh, gate that went around to, to get into the city, there was a little thing called the uh, eye of a needle. And it was like a little bitty gate that went through and a camel could get through that. But the camel, first of all, had to get down on his knees and had to take the load off his back. Mm. And so that makes more sense to understand, you know, that we have to take, you know, the things that we're carrying and our burdens or maybe our possessions or whatever and so it just kind of opens it up in a little bit different. Um, I'm thinking about uh, to there uh, another uh, uh, passage that a lot of prosperity gospels people use that in the King James that it talked about how God wanted to prosper us, mm. you know, and, and wanting what was good for us. Well, that was uh, I think in that case Hebrew being tra- uh, translated into English, and the word you know could have been any other things, but they just jumped on prosper and build this entire theology that sort of goes over, you know, down a path and over a cliff away from, I think, what the gospel of Jesus is. And so that's why context is important in looking at that sort of things, uh, those sort of things as we are reading scripture. And so, you know, in the, just to take it back to the Disney movie for, for example, when, um, they were writing I mean, one of the scenes I, I actually pulled very heavily from the movie Saving Mr. Banks. Right. And so there's this scene sort of early in the movie where she has come and the songwriters are pitching the song Spoonful of Medicine Makes, you know, a Spoonful sugar. of Sugar Makes yeah. the Medicine Go Down. And so um, she hates it. You know, Disney loves it. Disney says, oh, it, it's iconic. You know, it's catchy. I can't ever even stop. And he's not wrong. I yeah. mean, everybody still sings that type of thing uh, today. Right, right. Yeah. And she says, oh, it just, it seems so patronizing to me, you know, to think that's, that's all the kids would do. And, you know, in the movie, she's snapping her fingers and the, and the nursery's being cleaned up, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, you know, that's not how she wrote Mary Poppins, that Mary Poppins taught kids responsibility, that they didn't, you know, do that. So, you know, she says, you know, Mary Poppins is the very uh, enemy of, of whimsy and sentiment and, and mm. Disney says to her, what? Mary Poppins, who, you know, comes flying in, you know, a flying On nanny, umbrella. you know, with an umbrella and a magic, you know, carpet bag, the en- en- enemy of whimsy and sentiment, it comes in to save the children that way. Yeah. And she says, oh, you think Mary Poppins has come to save the children? Oh, dear. And so, you know, in it, you begin to realize who Mary Poppins actually came from yeah. for, and it was for the father, mm. you know, it was, that's why the movie was called saving Mr. Banks, but she came to save the father. But actually when you're writing stories and building characters and storylines and stuff, you know, you have an antagonist and a protagonist and, Correct. and they had sort of set up Mr. Banks, the father figure as being the villain in, in the movie. And, and no, that was based on her father whom she loved. And, you know, it was a completely wrong direction for, the movie and so you know the practical applications for us is where might we be missing it in mm-hmm. our interpretation of the bible and going wrong 
you know, where we have vilified the wrong person or, you know, thought about the mission of Jesus in the wrong way, you know, and so it makes us to take a step back and look at things like context and the who, what, when, and where of everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I heard a speaker, um, one time talk about context and, and he was just really bringing it to a point. He, he said, if you only focus on just what is right there in front of you, sometimes you're going to miss such a bigger picture. And, and he related it. And I, I might've actually shared this before. I'm not sure, but he actually related it to like an African safari. Mm -hmm. And like, he said he went on the safari and he was so amazed even just by like the, the, the animals that were right around the cart. Mm -hmm. But what he didn't notice until he looked up and looked at the rest of the picture is that there was this giant sunset going down in front of him, and you could see mm -hmm. all of the animals at one time. You know, he's like, it was like a scene out of The Lion King, you know, just, it was amazing and gorgeous. But if I just would have focused on the thing right there in front of me, I never would have noticed, you know? Yeah. So taking context as like this, this thing that's right there in front of you, maybe even the low hanging fruit, but not expanding it past that. Yeah, you're going to miss a lot. And I think all those tools can be valuable throughout our lives, just how everyone has a story. Mm -hmm. And so understanding, you know, uh, the old adage, you know, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Understanding someone else's position and, and context and stuff is very important. And, you know, in this day and age, we don't have a lot of that going on, a lot of listening, a lot of understanding where the other person was coming from. They may have those beliefs based on some things that happened in their life. And yeah. understanding that gives us more insight and more, and it helps us to value that other person in a deeper and better way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and I, we have definitely hit on, hit on this before, but it just kind of brings back the idea of, of respect the people you're with, mm -hmm. you know, like in, in terms of the conversation and, and, and valuing what other people have to say to learn about them and stuff like that. You don't know what that other person's been through or how they grew up. And sometimes we just need to have a patience, even if we don't agree with them. You know, I, I can think of uh, several instances where I have seen uh, very conservative and very liberal go very head to head, like at it. But they grew up in very different circumstances. Sure. You know exactly. what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. And whether I'm not saying one or the other was more right or the other, but they didn't take time to take, to have that conversation of getting to know each other first and then be like, okay, I can respect your opinion. And oftentimes it would actually end up in like them calling each other names. And then it's a more divisive thing. Cause it's like, you're an idiot. Well, you're an idiot, blah, blah, blah. Well, you said nothing, sir. Yeah. And using your African safari thing, you know, if you just, if you have the focus of these two and they may be only able to see their own perspective, but you just have those two mm -hmm. in the perspective. If you pull out to see the whole landscape, you begin to see the whole bigger picture of, of, of how complex uh, a lot of things are and, yeah. and, and also how beautiful they are and how they, they can work together, you know, they can to pull out and, you know, and, and see it from a distance you begin to, to, to see, and, you know, and, and so, I mean, we're, we're applying it to two different things here, but they they can be the same. It's all story, but there is also the story of our faith that is written down in the Bible yeah. and, and understanding it. And there's certainly many different ways that you can read the Bible. You can read it, you know, devotionally. And so, you know, really going and getting, you know, the, you know, the, the Greek dictionaries and all that stuff down when you're doing that. And it can speak to you certainly in that way. Yeah. Uh, but I think to be a serious student of the, of the Bible is to take a step back and, uh, you know, and to have an intellectual curiosity about it, about, you know, why, what's the landscape here? What's the geography of, you know, as a, you know, man goes down from Jerusalem to Jericho, what does that mean? You know, we drove to, you know, Roswell. Well, you know, it's level there. Yeah. Going down from Jerusalem, to Jedek, uh, you know, it, it, I forget how many feet it lo loses. It's literally going downhill. It's like going down Stone Mountain yeah. to get to get to the bottom. So that, that makes a difference to that story. How does that make the difference to the story? So you know, um, it, context matters, and you know, interpretation can um, you know can change based on when we really kind of know and see, acknowledge the big picture. And I think yeah. a, I think a good understanding is even how uh, you kind of came up 
with this idea for the sermon. I'm, I'm going to give a little sneak peek behind the scenes because yeah. uh, I walked into the office on Monday yeah. and I remember you kind of looking at me being like, I have no clue what I'm going to do with this. Because <laughs> uh, you're like, it's. I watched it and it just, it felt kind of dry. You know, like it was hard, it was hard initially yeah. to find something to really gravitas to, to say like, this is going to be my main point. And, and as I was thinking, you know, it's been a long time since I've watched Mary Poppins, but I was thinking about Mary Poppins and I mean, honestly, the point of like, I thought it was about the kids, you know, until, yeah. until the quote that you put in the clip, I was like, hmm, yeah, you know, but to, to kind of, to pull back is you recognized in that moment, it's like, I can work with this, but I can also bring some context to this and find these like around the outside store, like, you know, cause Saving Mr. Banks is a very different movie than Mary Poppins. They're relating to the same movie, right? but one of them's the story of how it was made. And one of them's the actual story of it, you know, of the, right. But the where adaptation. might it had, if they stayed on that tangent, where might they have ended up with the interpretation of P.L. Travers story? Yeah. Because if you're making Mr. Banks into being the antagonist, you're not going to have that reconciliation at the end where right. he comes back and he realizes, you know, at the bank, you know, it's all about the kids. And this is a load being fired from the bank is a load off of me and let's go fly a kite. And then Mary Poppins, her mission is done. Yeah. Because she's helped Mr. Banks understand how precious the children was and how, how precious life is in, in those experiences and family and, and all of that. So, you know, but, but if you had end up in the end, you might not have ended up with that ending had you not had, had she not been there and given that context, you know? Yeah. So I think it's part of my point. And then at the end, you know, one of the other quotes I, I pulled from the Saving Mr. Banks movie was when he finally understood and sat down with her and said, um, you know, I understand now, you know, she, he's come to to save, you know, it's Mr. Banks he came to save. It's the father. Yeah. Uh, and he said, you know, uh, forgiveness is what I've learned from your books. And, you know, I have completely applied that to thinking about studying the Bible, you know, and we could end up in a different place based on how we read it. Yeah. And so there are a lot of people that look at that from sort of a judgmental who's in and who's out kind of thing. And so, you know, kind of think about what it, standing before God and saying, what have I learned from your book? I, I hope it's about forgiveness Yeah, and, you know, in, in love and grace rather than judgment and condemnation and who's in and who's out and all of that. So, uh, that was, that was a big takeaway for me for the movie as yeah. well. And, and I, I love that, you know, yeah. even just the visual of like, you know, you, you run into, or the visual of standing before God and he goes, you did great at forgiving, you know? And that's yeah. like, that would warm my heart of like, mm -hmm. because in essence, if we're saying we're Christian, we're saying we're to be Christ like, and like one of the main things Christ came to do mm -hmm. was to show people forgiveness. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I succeeded, but I, I also just, you know, how sometimes people will say, how, how would you summarize the Bible in a sentence? Or how would you summarize mm -hmm. uh, your role as a Christian? You should, it's like one word right there. Forgiveness, mm -hmm. you know, is if we were really about that of, of reconciling with, with our neighbors when they upset us or family members or, or just somebody that we deem as like our arch nemesis for a little while or mm -hmm. whatever. I, I man, I remember in uh, kindergarten, this kid named Sam Bentley, we were playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He popped me right in the nose. He's my mortal enemy until like sixth grade. And then we were like, are we cool? You know, like five years later, we don't have this really understanding, but I, I for some reason that stuck with me and I, and I was so mad at him for all those years. And then all of a sudden it was like, yeah, we're good. Whatever. Where, where is he today? I have no clue. Sam, if you're watching. Sam, <laughs> if you're watching. <laughs> hope you're doing well, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so. I'm coming for you. No, play. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I love this idea of forgiveness. And I think it's something that we all need to have because I feel like overall we are grudge bearing people. And I'm not saying, I'm not calling you or anybody watching necessarily grudge bearers, but I feel like we have a hard time letting go of stuff. And most of the time it's because 
we don't try to resolve an issue when it comes up. So we hold on to it Mm -hmm. and then it becomes a space to where we're asked to forgive and we feel unjustified or whatever. And some of those are real, but some of them are us kind of holding on to that too. Yeah. And it, you know, I think that goes back another movie, you know, we talked about the importance of forgiveness last week uh, in the Mr. Rogers film. And so, you know, these, these movies that uh, in some ways are for children, but, families uh, can end up having, you know, very deep life points. You know, there's uh, all stories. There's only like four or five stories when it comes down to it, you know, and uh, you know, you can track the way the story arc goes and find out where the heroes are and that. And I, and, and I think it's important for us to understand what kind of story we are in. Yeah. And we are in a redemptive reconciliation kind of story is not kind of story that we find ourselves in not the epic good versus evil where you know one side ends up crushing and destroying the other in the end we're in a story where all things are reconciled in the end yeah and so that's that's the story we find ourselves in and and i think it's important to realize that as we kind of walk through life uh but you know we love those other kind of stories the star wars the you know lord of the rings all those kind of other stories they're helpful yeah um and it's a way of imagining and thinking about it but but ultimately, you know, it's about God's will being done in heaven as it is in earth. And, right. you know, so. I do um, have a question. Mm-hmm. Do, like, if you, you know, I know you were trying to focus in on family type movies because we have kids in the sanctuary and, and mm-hmm. stuff like that right now. And, and you're trying to kind of keep it adapt. If you could pick any movie to do a, to do a sermon like that on, did you do it or... Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've done, I've done those things. I've done more adult kind of films, you know. I've the, uh, you know, just going back a little bit in time, but you know, the the first Matrix Matrix movies. It's kind of hard to forget about the third one in that series. Yeah. But you know, I was doing this a lot when the Matrix movies were coming out. So the first two a lot had a lot of spiritual meaning and understanding of that. You know, and, I, and I've done Star Wars, and I've done some really kind of um, independent, esoteric films. Lars and the Real Girl is one of my favorite ones. So I have done some others, but, I, you know, I think you can find there's very few few things that have a real value. I mean, you're not going to find it in, like, Jackass the movie. You're probably not going to ever probably. do Yeah, but, um, <laughs> but, but, but most films that have any kind of quality about them at all, you can... I think find something of, of re- redeeming value or some sure. kind of example. Uh, I just think that's just how God reveals God's self. Yeah. So, so there's not, what about, what about you? You got one? Ooh, if I could do one movie, Hmm. Man, I should have thought before I asked the question because you might've put it back. I mean, let's mm-hmm. see. I think have you ever seen coach Carter. Mm-hmm. I love coach Carter. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite movies that, I feel like this is very underrated. Mm-hmm. I think I'd probably go with that one. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you another one I've gotten a lot of um, a mileage out of over the years is is Contact, the movie. Do you remember that one? Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, there's some great lines in that and, yeah. you know, in, in, insights and, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, I had an experience, you know, and it's something I wish everyone could have. Uh, and, and yes, it could have been this other way, but, I, you know, for me, I had this experience, you know, that yeah. those lines by Jodie Foster, it's just very powerful to me. Very so. powerful. No one else knows what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, why don't we uh, kind of give a look, look ahead to next week? I think we're trying to shoot a special episode a little bit, aren't we? Yeah. Next week, um, next week on Monday, when, which is the days we usually shoot, this is the 4th of July. Correct. And so we're going to actually, I think, try to do this, on the day that the time that it comes out, so we're going to look for Wednesday at noon to do it live, and uh, you know it won't be very much different than the way we're doing it. It'll be a lot more work on Frankie because he's going to have to produce it as we go along rather than video and editing later. So he uh, can do uh, it. We have faith. We, we, we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're going we're going to try that. I think it I think it might work. You know. And, yeah. Uh, so and and next week, you know, the sermon just lets you know where we're going. Um. Uh, it's kind of a one-off because it's the 4th of July weekend, so I'm not starting a new series into the next weekend. 
And, and so I'm doing it, I forgot what I call it, call it up, uh, Untangling Our Souls, I think is the title I ended up with, and looking at one of those psalms about, you know, finding rest for our souls. Mm. And you think about, like, getting a pair of, of headphones out or a, a, or extension cord or something and being all tangled up, you know. Yeah. And sometimes our souls feel that way and just need to be untangled. And, you know, what, what are the ways where we can find rest for that? And, of course, one of the big places we can find that, I think, is within the church and within the sacraments. And this Sunday we're having Holy Communion. So nice. it all ties in together. And we'll be unpacking that deep subject next week as we look at how goes it with your soul. That sounds yeah. that, that sounds great. Yeah. I do think you missed an opportunity to put in Independence Day as your last movie. Yeah. I, I, Fighting some aliens, Will Smith at his best. Yeah, Will Smith saves the movies and another truth uh, against aliens. That's right. Yeah, essentially the same. He does this a couple times. Essentially the same movie as Men in Black. Uh, yeah, we're yeah. not going there. I'm not doing this with you. <laughs> not 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 on live uh, or, or film recorded. But anyway, um, guys, we always appreciate you being here. We're excited next week to do this live. Please, we'll we'll put out the times. We'll put out all. You'll know the information. Join us, communicate with us. We'll we'll probably be able to even uh, have some dialogue together where we can share what you're talking about with the with the screen and stuff like that. I'd, it'd be I, I'm excited about this. I think this is be really right, fun. Yeah. yeah. And if it goes well, we might do it a few more times here and there just to kind of see how it goes. Yeah, see yeah. how it goes. But right. anyway, guys, uh, we appreciate you watching, and we'll catch you next time. Hi. Right. God bless. <laughs>